Right, this will be the second time I've recorded this video because my mad neighbour thinks that um, fixing a car involves getting in it and revving the nuts off it for about 20 minutes solid. So, anyway, here's the uh, HTC Wildfire. It used to be called the HTC Buzz. You might be able to hear his car still revving. Now this is it actually without the back on. And you can see here that the back of the phone actually also forms the front of the phone as well. Here's the back cover here and uh, it's got this lip around the front and it's actually still got a bit of a chin look. Now a lot of sites and a lot of um, reviews that you may have read or previews that you may have read uh, have compared this to the bigger brother, the HTC Desire. Now both have got Android 2.1 and the HTC Sense and Bluetooth and GPS and the 3.5mm audio, uh, audio jack and Wi-Fi and stuff like that, but this is a lower priced version. This is a HTC Wildfire and it's got um, a 5 megapixel camera on the back. Uh, you can see I've not put the battery on at the minute, as opposed to the 8 megapixel on the HTC Desire. It's got a 528 megahertz uh, processor instead of the 1 gigahertz that's on the HTC Desire. And we've also got a 3.2 inch QVGA TFT capacitive screen. But you get all the goodies. You, you know, apart from that, the only difference really is the screen size, uh, the screen resolution, the camera resolution, and the. Um, what else? I've completely forgotten. The size of it. Oh, the, the CPU, the, uh, the, the power of it, basically, the speed of the, the phone. Now, this is coming out on loads of different networks. Vodafone, I believe, 3 in the UK, T-Mobile, and it's also going to be unlocked as well. So it's coming out quite cheaply as well. So this is really to get people on the Android uh, ladder, a lot more people onto the Android platform, and using the HTC Sense interface. Now here, you put your SIM in there, and you've got a micro SD expansion, which is here on the side. And that's about it for the back. We've got, uh, as you can see on the back, look, there's no protective thing on the camera. It's uh, a hole, so there's no chance of any smudge, smudges or fingerprints. There's no stylus. That is so 2007 now. And we've got on the top here, we've got the 35 millimeter audio port. I have to actually put the phone into the back like that. We'll slot it together. And you can see that chin. It's not a big chin, not like the chin on the Hero, or even to the uh, on the Legend. This is a, quite a subtle chin on the phone, but it just maintains the HTC style. There you can see the industry standard micro USB connector on the left hand side. We've got the volume up and the volume down button there. Uh, there's a camera and a little flash with the external speaker here. We've got that band on the back, very reminiscent of the HD2, which was a Windows phone. Uh, but that isn't the battery cover, that's just a, a styling point lanyard loop there if you want to hang it on your wrist or your round your neck, whatever you want to do. Uh, very smooth edges here. This is a sort of a rubbery, rubberized type feel, this bit here, and this is a very cool steel effect. Um, HTC logo and a very curvy back, very holdable if that's a word. Uh, 3.5 millimeter audio port is sculpted into the top again. This is all very curvy, very nice here. There's that little lip that you have to use to take the back off. Uh, power on and off there on the top. There it is booting up. We've got the buttons on the front here on this smooth black uh, frame around the main screen. Home menu back and the search button. The search button takes on different um, sort of functionality depending on what program you're in what you know if you're in Google Maps it will search for a postcode or a place name if you're in uh, the browser it'll do a Google search um, etc etc if you're in Google Mail it'll search your mail this is a um, your, your trackball replacement this is the optical trackpad uh, or trackball whatever you want to call it but this will help you navigate around the fantastic HTC Sense interface this has got Android 2.1 Android and it's got some extra functionality which I'll show you in a minute because we're going to be doing a review on this. You may have already seen our uh, uh, gallery because we went down to London and we were invited down to London to have a look at all the uh, HDC wildfires that were all stacked up. You may remember they were all stacked up in a pyramid 
uh, this hasn't got enough power to turn on so here's one I prepared earlier this one here now I'm going to show you something I forget the contents of the box before we just power that one on here's a box just got it out of there very small box I think the days of getting a big shoe box sized thing when you buy a phone are hopefully gone so we're all eco-friendly and using very small boxes now this is a box that was given to me by um, the fantastic guys at the PR team uh, this is the uh, USB cable that connects you in it's a standard sort of micro USB uh, industry standard micro USB cable now so this will uh, I mean back in the day when everybody connected their phones to their PCs because they had to for convert uh, to copy um, uh, emails and contacts and stuff like that you had to have one of these cables a lot of that stuff is done in the cloud now like Google it will synchronize your email and your calendar appointments and your contacts through the cloud um, but you can also use exchange and other methods you can even use your Twitter contacts and their contact details uh, or um, Facebook rather you need Facebook details so that's your standard micro USB PC goes in that end computer uh, phone goes in that end but I wanted to show you something else here. Uh, this is the, I'll just show you in the other pack. We've got the headset, nice pair of HTC headphones there, and it also doubles as your hands free kit so you can still go jogging, answer calls, press that little button there, uh, make and receive calls when you're out and about uh, or driving around. Of course, it does Bluetooth as well, so you can have a proper Bluetooth kit if you wish. Now, I wanted to show you, and that's not something we normally concentrate on, but they're doing little changes like this. And if you look at your current power pack or your charger, it doesn't look anything like that. This is the new HTC charger, and you can see it is very nice. Very nice looking little charger, and that, that is it. Seriously, that is the charger. No cables trailing around. No big splodgy sticky out bit. Now, depending what country you're from, you'll get the corresponding plug to stick on the end. If you're in good old Blighty like we are now, or um, I don't know, Cyprus or somewhere, you get this three pin uh, plug here. Now, this, as you can see, marries up with that. So it'll only go in one way. You put that in like that, and then we give it a little twist. And there we go, clicks into place. We've got the USB output there, and that bit goes into your wall. So you might be able to hear my neighbour now revving up to about 8,000 RPM. Uh, there you go, plugs into the wall so it looks a bit like that. And then you plug your uh, charger in, uh, your cable in there, and that plugs into your phone. So that's what I've done here with this one because we've got two of these and as I was going to say earlier what we're going to do is review the HTC Wildfire and we've got three of them. We've got three HTC Wildfire phones. I'll show you why. But we're going to give one to um, somebody that has never used an Android phone before. They've never even seen one, experienced one, they don't know how to use it. You know, they're, they're, They've never seen the HTC Sense interface before. Uh, one I'm going to use um, for the geeky sort of IT guys and <laughs> one my wife's going to use so we'll see if it really is um, you know good for everybody this phone what we're going to do so this is the, what happens when you first boot up I'm going to go through the first boot sequence you, you, we've gone past the HTC boot screens that you saw on that one I've got no sim card in here so I'm going to trip over in a few bits but we first choose what country we're in then it says you haven't put a SIM card in, sort that out, so I'll skip that. It teaches you how to type with the on-screen keyboard, which is surprisingly easy. Now, the auto-correction system, which you may have seen in other cool smartphone videos, is very easy. If I type simple here, I've actually typed simpler with an R at the end on the left-hand side, but it's auto-corrected, it's a simple. So it knows what word you're trying to put in. It won't get it right all the time, but for the most part, it will give you a choice of the words you probably meant to do and just to accept it you don't need to press any special keys you just press space and it moves on to the next word 
So I'll skip that, that's very good. Now it's gonna say, how do you connect to your internet? Because we need to set up the phone, and then we need to do a few things. So I'm gonna say, I connect via Wi-Fi. Uh, now you can either have Wi-Fi only, I don't know why you'd wanna do that, but if you don't have a data plan on your, uh, your, your, your SIM, if you don't have a data plan, you say, well, I only want Wi-Fi, just connect when there's Wi-Fi. When I'm out and about, never ever use the internet connection on my uh, SIM card, on my network. So that's great, really, but uh, I'm gonna say mobile and Wi-Fi. Connect to a Wi-Fi network. So it's gonna do a search now for any Wi-Fi networks around here. We've got two open networks that my crazy neighbor has set up with his Revy engine. I'm gonna connect to this, uh, my own DSL to connection, I'll just put in my super secret password, which is probably something to do with an alcoholic beverage. There we go. I'm turning an address, so it's fairly easy. You can see, even in, even though you may not have even put the SIM card in, which is, which is a bit daft to be honest, like I haven't, you can still carry on and get the phone going. Okay, do you want to use a Google location system? Uh, this will allow Google to collect anonymous location data. So this aids things like Google Maps and the weather widget, stuff like that. I'm just going to say yes to both of those things. And then it's going to ask you, uh, you can synchronize your mail, contacts and calendar events by the settings, uh, by setting up the following account type. Actually, there's a, I've noticed, by the way, HTC, You've got a spelling error there. You've actually put by settings up the following accounts. You want to correct that, guys. But I'm going to put in my Google account. You can have a POP3 account. If you've got a POP3 account, you don't have to sell your soul to Google to get this phone working. So I'm going to go off the screen here. I know a lot, I get a lot of comments on the uh, uh, YouTube videos, which I love. But uh, a lot of guys say, well, why... Why haven't you prepared this? Why are you going off camera and, and boring us while you're typing in your <laughs> setting? And it's because I wanted to show you exactly what you would do when you're taking this phone out of the box. And I can't really get past this stage without typing something in. So I'll put that in there. And we can switch between. This is a keyboard here, the numeric and the uh, uh, alpha numeric keyboard down the bottom here. We can just sort of type that in now and press enter. By the way, you press menu and it'll pop down. You can change the wireless settings there. I'm going to sign in. It's going to communicate with Google over the Tinterwebs. And it says, you've signed in. Well done. I'm going to skip that. I don't have an Exchange server or a POP3 account. Facebook, you can connect to. And it will pull in details, uh, contact details, and updates, and the gallery pictures, all the pictures people are showing on their YouTube, on their Facebook page will show up on there. Flickr, which is a Yahoo service, which allows you to um, share photos, and Twitter, which of course everybody knows. I'm gonna skip that for now, but you can add those in later or now. Uh, it says what date is it? It's the 18th of uh, June today, and that's right, so I'm gonna skip that. And then it just shows you a little bit more about the phone. So I'll finish that. And here is the HTC Sense interface. What we're going to be showing you is the app sharing system on here. I'm going to download um, apps because uh, like any Android phone you can download applications. We can press home on here and we can switch out. Look at that. So instead of having to do this, oh, I need to get to the last tab where my email access is. Or, you know, oh, it's, I've got a slide and oh, it's so difficult. You just press home. Or if you, you know, not on the home tab, you press it twice. But if you're on the home tab, and then you can pop out and just instantly slide into the tab in question. Uh, so here, if we go down here, we've got this app sharing feature. I can't use it just yet because I have no apps. But uh, it's easy enough to install stuff. And for those of you that have never, ever used an Android phone, I'm going to show you just how easy it is. Um, let's go into the Android market. It's going to ask me a few things like... Um, do you agree to the terms and conditions of uh, the Android market? And I'm going to say yes to that. And then we'll do a search for some application. 
Now up here you've seen that search button down on the screen or we can press the search button down here and it instantly goes into searching the Android market. So let's do a search for I don't know. Let's do a search for BBC. Let's have some BBC news applications. Does a search for you. Produces the uh, results. You click on the app you want. Tells you a bit more about it. Slide down, there's a nice picture. And you go, right, I want to install that, it's free. Do you agree to it having network access, which is pretty obvious, you need that. Say yes. You can see the screen is slightly lower resolution, but it's still very usable indeed. Up here, we've got this uh, this bar that you can slide down, at the information bar. It tucks all the notifications away, but you can still see them when you need to, so that you're not bombarded with information all the time. It's there, but it's it's nice and neat and tidy. So it's successfully installed, and then I can simply click on it, and I can go into the application. It'll download the most recent news items from the web. Uh, you can change from different news sections. Uh, and you think, wow, that is a really cool app. Look, I can go into sections, I can go into uh, England, I can look for um, my local area for news in my local area, or, you know, sports news. I think that's fantastic. I mean, look at this. This is, uh, this is about um, a mother and a young child, and the young child was um, uh, having a bit of a, a paddy fit, so um, the bus driver threw, threw her off the, the bus, which is terrible. So you can double tap. Uh, zoom in supposedly, oh no you, you don't need to do that because that, the app, that's the app saying you can double tap but you don't need to you've got the pinch to zoom, pinch and zoom stuff and it will do this reflow system you may have seen us mention in other videos where it um, moves the text and so it stays on the screen so you're not scrolling left right left right left right all the time so I like that application, brilliant stuff I'm going to press into the app sharing feature now for some reason it still says you've got no apps so let's have a look see if we can refresh this and I think that is <laughs> that's a bit wrong ah there we go so there's the app share uh, the BBC News I like that I want to share it now you can share it via friend stream so if I click on that that will uh, send it via Twitter or uh, um, by your Facebook account. Now I haven't set that up yet so it's saying hey you don't appear to be logged into any social networks are you mad? And you just go uh, no I just cocked up. You can also share it via Google Mail so you can send an email to somebody and say this is a really cool application check it out. You can send it via POP3 email, you can send it via a uh, text message, you can send a peep which well this is uh, a tweet basically through the HTC peep interface which is uh, the HTC way of displaying uh, Twitter updates and it's very good I must say that, let's say a text message and there you go it's put this in there automatically for me uh, you can type in you can see it's pulled some of my contacts from Google already I've got Emily Jane Young in there and uh, it's put her email address in there already Whenever I start typing now, if I start typing their name, I just need to, if it's like um, Bob, if I type B, O, then straight away Bob would come up. Um, so I can uh, sort of take the um, keyboard away by pressing back. And down here you can see it says, I've been use, using the BBC, oh, cranky, sorry I've cocked up, I've been using the BBC News and I uh, think you might like it. Check it out from an Android phone. So if your friends have got an Android phone, they simply press that link there that it's created, market.android.com slash search slash da 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 and you can share that application with any other Android user. You don't have to necessarily use a HTC phone, don't have to necessarily use a HTC Wildfire phone either. Nice big keyboard as well there, it's very easy to type on. Um, so that's a little bit about the app sharing feature. And that's what we're going to be reviewing. We're going to see how easy it is to share applications between the phones. So I'll be sharing that application from that phone to this phone, etc. Now, we've got other apps which have been installed for us. The flashlight. Turn it on. Turn it off. Turn it on. Turn it off. And that, as you can see, turns on your little flash on the back. Um, 
we've also got the FM radio which I'll need to plug in the 3.5 millimeter audio headset that was supplied it's detected that at the top there uh, I'm going to click onto FM radio down here it's loaded up it's turning it on it's going to do a scan of um, the available radio stations and it will tune in to um, their most powerful ones preset them so that we can flick between them this is radio 2 I'm going to see if it gets RDS it's come up with BC for some reason but I presume that will correct itself in a minute uh, press menu, press speaker so you don't have to listen to it on these headphones you can have it in your pocket with this just trailing around if you want I've got a new email at the top there I can pull this down I can see that I'm listening to the FM radio and that should display the radio station identity let's just see probably just a signal strength this, there you go, so BBC Radio 3 so I can see that I'm listening to FM radio on 90.5 megahertz it's radio 3 I can see I've got an email. I can see I haven't changed. I haven't checked my time yet, and the SD card's not in, which is understandable because I haven't put one in yet. Check my email. Have a look at the mails. Yeah, I've got some junk. I'll just sort that out. Just uh, delete some some of the junk mail. Go back home. Very nippy, as you can see. There's no real lag at any point. So I've sorted out my email. I don't have to turn my computer on, I don't have to f fuss around, mess about with that. I can save this, I can switch it to mono. While I'm listening to the radio, let's let's do a bit of browsing. I'll just show you how easy it is to browse. This is the inbuilt browser. You can download other browsers like Skyfire if, if you wish. This is downloading uh, the HTC website, which is the um, default page. You can change that, press menu. I'm still listening to the radio. I'm just going to turn that off because uh, opera isn't what I'm into really. So let's go home. Internet. Here's the HTC website and it's very smooth to sort of browse around. And there HTC wildfire, bring your friends with you. But just, uh, let's sort of remove the headset. You can see look, I've just moved the screen around. I could do the pinch and zoom again. Very, very smooth. Zoom in. Let's see if we've got a site with any flash. Let's see if we can show you some flash stuff. Now, mm, let's see what website would I browse to. As you can see there, it just popped up with a few sites. Uh, it does um, come up with some sites that it, it it's guessing that you're trying to go to. And um, it will display them as you type and it will also use your history if you've browsed to a site before it will go to that site uh, here's our site um, and this should be maybe a flash animation we'll just see if it loads I'll just zoom in as you can see I can zoom in and move around whilst it's loading um, I've got a bit of a problem with my internet connection at the moment it is running quite slow this isn't the phone uh, that's at fault it's the broadband connection is running very slowly at the minute because there's some sort of football event on which is uh, yanking all the bandwidth we can there you go this is a flash based advert there we can um, if you wish look on YouTube if I just click on this video here it will go straight into the YouTube uh, website and it will load up the separate uh, YouTube application which has been put into this um, phone for you so you can view YouTube videos um, on the move this is our Android app review show so um, this is a great um, show to watch if you're interested in the applications that are available for um, this particular phone on the and an any Android phone there's Tom and he goes through all the recent Android hand, um, applications that are available and it gives them a review it's great uh, a, a great show so you've got uh, a calculator calendar clock you've got footprints for um, sort of recording where you've been in the world and tagging GPS locations to them a desk clock which is very nice for looking at um, like that so you can see what time it is you've got um, 
the weather here at the top we can go into Google Maps we can do all the things that you would normally do with Google Maps I'm not going to go into that right now and it is a very very quick very versatile handset and I must admit that for the price point it is fantastically good I mean what you're seeing here you can totally customize you can change the backdrop if you don't want this cool funky backdrop you just press menu settings you can personalize everything change the ringtones change the wallpaper change the lock screen the default ringtone there are stacks of them there's the old phone there's happy glass and lots and lots and lots of different very clear very professional ringtones you can download or stick an mp3 on there but I'm getting carried away because this was only meant to be an unboxing video it's turned into a 25 minute monster but um, the HTC Wildfire you'll see more over the coming days at CoolSmartphone.com and we'll have a review online soon with uh, the experiences of all those three people uh, using the HTC Wildfire from my opinion, I think that is a fantastic phone for the money. A really fantastic, well designed, well put together. The HTC Sense interface is great. If you do want a slightly higher resolution screen, you know, for the people that do want that, the Desire, you cannot be. The Desire is a fantastic phone, I must admit. I cannot say anything bad about it at the moment. Uh, but for the money, this is a really, really epically good handset, I must admit.